Hi, in this video we will learn how to build a dashboard like this one using a CSV file containing sales information as an input. The resulting dashboard will update instantly every time we have some new data. So imagine you have uh, once a day or once a week some updates about the information as a file and when I drop it, it will ask me if I want to store it and when I click OK, notice that the dashboard will change for everyone that's uh, looking at it. So the dashboard will keep up to date um, all the time, um, even when new data is available, without having to do some re any recalculation. So now let's uh, build it. I'm going to create a new deck. I'm going to call it Sales Dashboard. And I'm going to create a source card, a CSV file. I'm going to say that it's going to be persistent. This is the feature that will allow me to drop a file and the change be reflected on every user. Uh, seeing dashboards that depend on this card. I can either uh, click and get a file picker or I can uh, drag and drop the file here for it to load. It will ask me if I want to store it in the channel. I will say that I do. I will collapse this. And now we can start working. We have our data here as a table. I'm going to create a group by because the first uh, thing we are going to build is the pie chart that uh, shows the sum of uh, the amount column. If I drag the column and drop it in the placeholder value of the group by, it will calculate the sum for all columns. So it's, this is the sum of all sales, but we want to do it by line. So I'm going to drag the line uh, column and drop it here on the key, on group by key. So now it's calculating um, so the sum of sales by line. So I'm going to create a new card and I'm going to select the chart type. I'm going to drag the amount sum into the value and line into the key. So it reads chart amount sum by line. It will select um, uh, the bar chart by default. I'm going to select the pie chart and uh, it already looks uh, pretty well, but we want a donut chart. So I'm going to click here on the right and uh, expand settings. Each chart has different settings. I'm going to just uh, increase the inner radius to get a pie chart and I'm going to collapse the settings. So we have our first chart. I'm going to create the second one, uh, which is um, uh, amount of sales by country. I'm going to create again a group by and I'm going to drag the amount and drop it into value. And this time I'm going to drag the country and drop it in key. So it reads select sum amount group by country. I'm going to create a new chart and I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to chart the amount sum by country. This time the bar chart is okay. I'm going to expand the settings and remove the legends. At the bottom of the chart card, we have the data that the chart uses to display itself. So uh, we are going to sort by amount. So now it's sorted by amount. And instead of each country having one color, we can select here uh, the formula, here color. It's picking a consistent color for each country name. But we want all the countries to have the same, all the bars to have the same color. So in the formula editor that opened, I'm going to go to the second section and pick a color from the ones available. These settings over here are applied for each value in the inputs, um, but it's specific for each chart. And these are settings for the chart that are for the chart as a whole, not for every single value. So now we have the second uh, chart. Let's do the third, which uh, is going to involve some more aggregation. I'm going to again create a group by. Here I can drag the amount and drop it here. An alternative is to click here on the placeholder of value and it will tell me that I can select any value of the ones listed here and it will be added to the value placeholder. So I can select amount and I can click here on key and notice that this changed. So now when I select something, it will go to key. So what I'm going to do is click on year. I can do the same with quarter. I can click it or I can drag and drop it. So if, instead of clicking value and key, you can just drag and drop them from here because they are closer. So now what we are doing is uh, selecting the sum of amount by grouping by year and quarter. We want to draw uh, to sort by year and then by quarter in case that the data is not um, 
ordered we want uh, the data to be ordered in the chart so i'm going to create the chart and again now i'm going to do it with click i'm going to select amount sum here and year and quarter here i'm going to close this it already picked a stacked bar chart the reason why i select a, a different chart is because uh, this query has two uh, inputs on the group by so um, the bar chart is not uh, good for for this configuration so it's going to list all other alternatives charts that work better with this configuration so this is uh, enough for now let's do the next one here i want to show you something else i'm we're going to do something similar so i'm going to click here on the top right of the card and expand uh, more options and select the clone option i'm going to Click the input quarter and remove it and confirm. And now I'm going to select um, line instead of, of, um, of quarter. So now we are grouping the sales by year and by line. We want to see how they progress over time. So now I'm going to create a chart and I'm going to select uh, amount sum by year and line. As before, it's going to select uh, the stacked uh, bar chart by default, but we can change it to the grouped bar chart to have something different. Notice that the colors in the grouped bar chart are the same as the ones in the pie chart because uh, the, the function that's used to assign the colors by default, value to color, will always assign the same color to the same value. So across charts and uh, the same names, the same labels, the same identifiers will have the same color, which makes it easier to track across uh, charts. The last chart we have, it's uh, a variation of this one, but with a different representation. So I'm going to uh, clone this chart and I'm going to select uh, area map, which uh, has different uh, options for countries and for the world. The world is uh, the one we want right now, but it's, it's assigning uh, the color to the countries where it has data according to the name of the country. That's not what we want. What we want is to assign colors in a range of colors according to, to the, the sum. And uh, so countries with less sales will be dimmer and countries with more sales will be like uh, stronger colors. For that, we need to have do something extra. We need to calculate the minimum and maximum value uh, of sales for all columns. To do that, I'm going to drag the amount sum and drop it here at the bottom, summarize column, and it's going to create a new uh, summarize column. So it's a single value that represents the minimum of that column. We can also calculate maximum, the sum and the average. So I'm going to do it again to calculate the second one. So now we have the minimum and the maximum. We can either drop from here to have it available on the chart, or as before, I can click and search for it and add the maximum. Depending on uh, if you have a mouse available or if you prefer to just pick from a list instead of uh, dragging and dropping. So now that we have the current value, the minimum and the maximum, so we can pick a value in a range, I'm going to click here on the color uh, formula and check that uh, the whole formula is uh, highlighted and not just the parameter because we are going to change it. It will open on the formula section. I'm going to search for color and there's this function called color for value from a starting color to an ending color in a range. The range by default is 0 to 100 but of course our sales are much uh, bigger than that. So what we are going to do is uh, we can parameterize these two ways. One is I can drag one input and drop it in the parameter value, for example, or in the 50, and it will be placed there. Uh, sometimes it's hard to hit the parameter. Uh, so what you can do is click on the parameter and it will highlight just the parameter. And here at the bottom, you will have the available inputs. So I'm going to select mean and I'm going to select the two parameter and I'm going to select max. If we check now, the colors are in the range. So it maps with a value in this range to this range of colors. We can change, for example, from like a light orange to a red, for example, if uh, this was something bad instead of something good. Um, so now that we have all of our um, charts, I should give them titles. Um, sales by country. Uh, 
Oops. Whoop. I'm going to, if you click here, it will collapse. If you control click, it will collapse all. So I can find the charts and give them better titles. And sales by line by year. A tri uh, trick is that if you control double click, it will assign a default uh, title that's better than the default according to the configuration. In this case, uh, in the charts, it's better if we do it manually because um, they are going to be displayed in the dashboard. So sales by quarter. And we have all of them except this one. Sales by line. So now we have all of our charts and I'm going to create the last card, which is the layout card. And here again, I can either collapse all so I have them close for example if I drag this chart over here it will show my donut chart the alternative if they are far away I can open the basket here and drag all the things I need at the end and they will be available here so I can drag this So I will clean this. We are going to put the bar chart here at the bottom, the map here, big, and these two over here. Here I'm creating a layout for this um, resolution, which is uh, really big screens, like TV screens on a wall. We can configure different layouts for different resolutions. This is for a big screen, for a laptop, for a tablet, and for a smartphone. InstaDeck will pick uh, the best resolution that has a layout uh, for the screen that's opening the dashboard. So you don't have to uh, configure all of them. Uh, it will pick the one that's not empty, that's closest to your current resolution. Usually it's... Uh, good enough to have two, like the biggest one and the smallest one. And then if you have different uh, requirements, you can fill the, the remaining ones. So now let's rename this to sales dashboard. And I'm going to click here on the more settings and I'm going to select the share um, option. I can give it an ID. It will be under and the URL app.instag.com slash s slash mariano garras slash this ID. The title that will appear on the tab, the theme, either light or dark. I can choose dark here to show what it looks. And the access permissions. If it's public to anyone, it's, if it's only available for authenticated users. And uh, if it's uh, password protected, you have to provide the password when it loads. Or if you want to share it only to a list of users. I'm going to share it uh, publicly right now. So I'm going to click share and it will appear here at the bottom. And if I click, it will open. And you will see that's the same as the one before, except that now it's dark instead of light. So this was how to create um, a dashboard from a CSV file that updates instantly when new data is available. If you have any questions, just comment below the video or contact us on social media. Bye.